The eightfold upright path consists of the following. One, upright views. Views refers to your opinions. They have not yet become external. Upright views are held in your mind. The meaning is that you should have a proper viewpoint. If your views are not upright, then it is easy to take a javelin road. If they are upright, then you take the right road. Which views are upright and which are javelin? An upright view would be: I should study the Buddha Dharma because the Buddha Dharma is upright. What is a javelin view? For instance, you gamble or do whatever is enjoyable and leisurely. You're lazy or you harm people. These are all activities born of your javelin views. Therefore, upright views are very important. Two upright consideration. No sooner do your Proper opinions come into being, then you think is it right or wrong. An upright consideration would be: I think that studying the Buddha Dharma is the most genuine business of humanity, and there is nothing wrong with it. Perhaps you have different considerations. I am afraid that this business of studying the Buddha Dharma isn't of any use. Now it is the scientific age. The Buddha Dharma talks this way and that about teaching people to do good deeds and to be good people. Nowadays, who is a good person? There aren't any. Whatever every what everybody does is evil. I say that people commit all sorts of evil deeds, but at the same time, these people have money to spend and liquor to drink. Since they have everything, they think that studying the Buddha Dharma is not that good. So they run off down a javelin road. If your consideration is upright, you won't. Three upright speech. If you have upright thought, you are capable of upright speech. What you say doesn't induce people to take javelin paths. It isn't drunken or mad, but always very precise and correct. You make everybody listen and like to listen and like acting in accordance with what you say. For upright occupation, upright speech leads you to an upright occupation, which is to say, one which most people think is wholesome and not one which is against the law. Five upright living. If your occupation is upright, then your lifestyle will be upright also. Six upright vigor. You should be vigorous in doing what is upright, not in doing what is improper. Seven upright mindfulness, eight upright samadhi. The four bases of psychic power are: one, the desire basis. This desire is wholesome, a hoping for good things. Two, the vigor basis. Three, the mind basis. Four, the volitional basis. The four drawings in mindfulness concern body, feeling, mind, and dharmas. One contemplate the body as impure. Two contemplate feeling as suffering. Three contemplate the mind as impermanent. Four contemplate dharmas as having no self. The four types of upright diligence are: one, good roots which have not yet been grown are caused to grow. Two, good roots already growing are caused to grow further. Three evil which has not yet been done is kept from being done. Four evil thoughts which have already been generated are cut off. The five faculties are: one, the faculty of faith; two, the faculty of vigor; three, the faculty of mindfulness; four, the faculty of samadhi; five, the faculty of wisdom. The five powers are: one, faith has a power of faith. Two, vigo has the power of vigo. Three, mindfulness has the power of mindfulness. Four, samadhi has the power of samadhi. Five, wisdom has the power of wisdom. Together, the five faculties, the five powers, the four types of upright diligence, the four dwellings in mindfulness, the four bases of psychic power, the seven treasures in enlightenment, and the eightfold upright paths. Make the say make the make the thirty seven categories of the way. One day, connect right through and reap the fruit of sagehood. 
If you can't evade the 37 categories of the way, then one day you will suddenly connect right through and be certified as having attained the fusion of sagehood. Partial truth with residue is just a conjured city. You shouldn't dwell in the kind of nirvana which is a one-sided truth and has residue. That nirvana is a city which has been conjured up. It is not a genuine city. When your attainment of that kind of non-ultimate nirvana has been certified, you must still go forward and cultivate. Sutra and no understanding and no attaining. Verse the storehouse teaching Bodhisattva. Six phenomenal parameters. The perfect cultivates to the point of wonderful enlightenment, where nominal is suddenly clarified. Without any wisdom, he destroys attachment and empties every characteristic. Without attainment, he has no verification and comprehends the fusion of dharmas. He makes a jeweled realm appear on the tip of a single hair, and he turns the dharma wheel while sitting on a speck of dust. These words are spoken, yet few, yet few have faith. I do not know how many know my sound. How many know my sound? Commentary understanding means wisdom. Attaining refers to certification to the attainment of a particular fruition of enlightenment. When you reach this state, you do not want wisdom and you do not have a fruition which is verified. There isn't any hope at all. Most people who study the Buddha drama suppose that they should first study wisdom and that only after they have learned to be wise will they realize the fruition of Buddhahood. This sutra says that the wisdom of prana does not exist. There isn't any attachment either. All is empty. It isn't that there isn't any wisdom or attainment, but there isn't any attachment to wisdom. And there isn't any attachment to the place one has attained. The Bodhisattvas of the storehouse of Chipitaka teaching practice the drama doors of having wisdom and having attainment. These Dharma doors are called the Phenomena Paramitas. First, the verse says, The storehouse teaching Bodhisattva, six Phenomena Paramitas. There are six Phenomena Paramitas and six Nomino Paramitas. The six Nomino Paramitas have no Phenomena characteristics and are without attachment to anything. On the other hand, the six Phenomena Paramitas entail attachments. To what? There is attachment to living beings who can be saved and to the way of the Buddha, which can be realized. To be attached to living beings who can be saved is, have, is to have wisdom. To be attached to the Buddha fruition, which can be realized, is to have attachment, to have attainment. Now the sutra says, and now no understanding and no attaining which indicates that there is no longer an attachment to the six phenomenal parameters. The six phenomenal parameters are one giving, which crosses you beyond misalignedness and greed. Beyond misalignedness and greed, if you cultivate the parameter of giving, you will not be misally and greedy. If you are misery and greedy, you will not give. As soon as you give, you cross beyond the mind of misery and greed. 2. Maintaining the precepts which crosses you beyond defilement and damaging transgressions. When you cultivate and maintain the precepts, you become extremely pure and clear like a bright pearl. To maintain the precepts is to be without defilement. No understanding and no attaining if you do not maintain the precepts, you will become dark and dirty from your defilements. Maintaining precepts crosses you beyond defilements. If you do not maintain the precepts, you will become a white piece of paper smudged a black ink, the more stain the blacker. If you maintain the precepts, the white piece of paper retains the original purity. 3. Patience and the results which crosses you beyond anger. 
If you cultivate patience, you won't have any temper. If you have a temper, then you don't have patience. For vigor, which crosses you beyond laziness, you should be vigorous and courageously courageous every day. To the extent that you are vigorous, you won't be lazy. Five, dear not samadhi, which crosses you beyond destruction. If you wish to cultivate dear not samadhi, you must first sit for a long time until you acquire the ability to enter samadhi. When you have entered samadhi, you will no longer be distracted. You will have samadhi power. Six, prana, which crosses you beyond stupidity, stupidity. The Chinese character to to cross beyond or to take cross to take a cross, that is to save, is used to translate paramita. But the crossing beyond refers to the six phenomenal paramitas, not to the nominal ones. The six phenomenal paramitas have perceptible characteristics which can be ascertained, ascertained in one's behavior. For instance. Though you are generous and not miserly, you are still attached to the thought, "Oh, I can give and and I'm not miserly." If you practice the six nominal paramitas, your giving would be the same as you are not having given. You shouldn't be attached. The six nominal paramitas are characterized by there being no attachment anywhere. There are many different levels of the six paramitas. For instance, the non-doing of the six paramitas, which is cultivated by the perfectly enlightened. Basically, there is no attachment. Whatever to what is done, it is equivalent to not having done anything. You say, when I haven't done something, then can I say that I have done it? If you can say that my giving is like non-giving, then can you say that non-giving is like giving? If you give, it is all right to think that it is like not having given, but you cannot say that your not having given is equivalent to your having given. The perfect cultivates to the point of wonderful enlightenment, where nominal is suddenly clarified. The bodhisattvas of the perfect teaching, who are just the same as the wonderful enlightenment bodhisattvas, cultivate the six nominal paramitas, along with the bodhisattvas of the special teaching. They completely understand that giving is the same as not giving, and that crossing beyond is the same as not crossing beyond. Therefore, the sutra says, and no understanding, and no attaining. Attachment to the six phenomenal paramitas fundamentally does not exist. So the verse says, "Without any wisdom, he destroys attachment and empties every characteristic." There had been an attachment to prana, but now all characteristics have been emptied. Therefore, the sutra says, "And no understanding, and no attaining." Without attaining, he has no verification and comprehends the fusion of all dharmas. There is no attainment to be react, react you know, to be reached, and there is no attachment to the verification of the fusion of Buddhahood. In other words, above there is no Buddha way which can be realized. Below there are no living beings. Who can be taken across? That is not to say that there aren't any living beings to take across, but although they are taken across, they are not taken across. Although all living beings have been taken across to extinction, there is not a single living being who has been taken across to extinction. It isn't that there aren't living beings to be taken across, but that there is no attachment, there is no understanding or attaining. This enlightenment is the great, perfect mirror wisdom, in which there is no attachment at all. Thus, the verse says, "He comprehends the fusion of dramas. He makes a jeweled realm appear on the tip of a single hair. When there has been certification to the attainment of such a state, the king's jeweled realm can appear on the tip of a single hair. That is the great manifesting within the small." And he turns the dharma wheel while sitting on a speck of dust. This is the doctrine of the Suragama Sutra. This was as spoken, yet few have faith. 
I do not know how many know my sound. There are very few people who believe, so I don't know how many people there are who know the sound. That is, who understand these principles. The venerable High Master Su Yun said, "I have gone everywhere within the boundaries of the heavens in search of someone who knows me, but I still don't know if anyone knows my sound. Someone who knows me is a friend who knows himself." The one who knows my sound knows the meaning of what I say. If no one knows my sound, then no matter what I say, nobody understands it. People who understand the principle of what has been said are said to know my sound. You say, "Drama master, I understand what you are saying." Then you know my sound. If you say that you don't understand, then you don't know my sound. If you say, "I understand yet do not understand," then you know my sound. Yet do not. Whether my sound is known or not, I shall still recite these verses and talk about their principles. Whoever cultivates according to them knows my sound. Whoever is not in accord with their principles and does not cultivate either does not know my sound. Whether you know my sound or not is simply whether you believe or not. If you believe in the principles I have talked about, you are one who knows my sound. If you don't, then you are not one who knows my sound. What principles I am talking about? He makes a jeweled realm appear on the tip of a single hair. On the tip of a tiny hair is manifest a Buddha country, a country where the Buddha proclaims Dharma to teach and transform living beings, and he turns the Dharma wheel while sitting on a speck of dust. Seated upon an extremely small speck of dust, how small is it? You turn the great Dharma wheel to teach and transform living beings. In this kind of state, the large appears within the small. If you understand that state, you are one who knows my sound. If you don't understand, then you should study the Buddha Dharma. Study until you too can sit on a speck of dust and turn the Dharma wheel. Then you will understand. When the term Chu Yin, one who knows my sound, is usually reserved for a very close friend who deeply understands one.